Tonight on Coyote News, after a week-long Dakota Days celebration, USD students are preparing for midterm exams. Also, there's a new club on campus that's taking Frisbee to a whole new level. And Tom and Meredith Brokaw were this weekend's D-Days Parade Marshals. Plus, catch up on Coyote Athletics. The women's soccer team only has two wins this season. See how the Coyotes are preparing for their last five games. And did you know that USD beat SDSU Saturday? That's coming up. But first, news headlines with Courtney Starrett. The U.S. Anti-Doping Agency says that Lance Armstrong has an extensive history on doping. Armstrong denies ever doping. However, his teammates from the U.S. Postal Service team admit their own doping and say Armstrong was a proponent who used and administered the doping drugs. The agency has more than a thousand papers in the file against the athlete. Armstrong is a seven-time Tour de France winner and a cancer survivor. It's likely that Jerry Sandusky will be spending the rest of his life in jail. Sandusky was sentenced yesterday for sexually assaulting 10 boys over 15 years. Judge John Cleland sentenced Sandusky to 30 to 60 years in prison. Sandusky will be 98 years old when he becomes eligible for parole. Clellan called Sandusky dangerous, saying he abused the trust of children. The Supreme Court is struggling today with racial preferences used by the University of Texas. In Fisher v. University of Texas, Abigail Fisher claims she was denied admission to UT's Austin campus because she was white. UT admits that one of their goals is to increase the percentage of minority students on campus. Because the case could produce new limits on affirmative action or roll it back entirely, the admissions programs nationwide will be influenced by high court decision. And those are your headlines. This year's homecoming parade marked USD's 150th anniversary. To celebrate the sesquicentennial, Tom and Meredith Brokaw, both of the class of 64, returned to their home state to serve as parade marshals. The Brokaws led the 98th annual Dakota Days Parade and spent the weekend visiting their old stomping grounds. Tom Brokaw says he remembers D-Days as a Dakotan constantly in competition with the strollers and buying kegs and throwing parties. What I remember is that my parents came down and went to the house in which I was living. We had a huge party the night before and it was a wreck. <laughs> and my mother did a very smart thing. She said, when we came back, she said, President I.D. Weeks, who's the president of the university, is coming over for coffee in about a half an hour. We've got to get this cleaned up. So the, all of us just plowed into it and got it cleaned up. And then she said, not true, but you were very good about cleaning up. Along with the Brokaws, this year's parade also featured President Abbott and his wife Colette, the homecoming royalty court, area marching bands, and local politicians, among many others. The Brokaws say the D-Day's parade has always been a personal favorite of theirs, and they were honored to act as marshals. This year, the Vermilion Police Department presented a lighter side to Dakota Day's law enforcement. The VPD had their first annual virtual ride-along Twitter campaign this weekend. The officers on duty kept the public updated on D-Day citations and arrests by tweeting them. One officer tweeted at 2 o'clock Saturday morning that public urination cases are like shooting fish in a barrel at this point. Tweets also covered DUIs, house party busts, and assaults. Police Chief Matt Betson says 82 citations were issued and 301 service calls were answered from Thursday at midnight through Sunday at midnight. USD athletic officials are asking the South Dakota Board of Regents to allow flexibility with the athletic expansion. The project, which includes building a new basketball and volleyball arena, as well as additional classrooms, is estimated to cost almost $60 million. This summer, Sanford Health announced its $20 million donation to help expand the U's athletic facilities. USD wants to build the development in phases instead of waiting for all the money to be collected. Seven weeks have passed already this semester, and that means it's time for midterm exams. Midterms can be frustrating for struggling students. Early alerts have been sent out to students with a D or lower in a class. Friday, those alerts will become deficiencies if they haven't improved. Students receiving early alerts are encouraged to use university tutoring services. The Academic Commons, located on the first floor of the library, offers programs to help students. They include the Writing Center, Presentation Center, Math Emporium, Supplemental Instruction, and Tutoring. The Math Emporium is temporarily being held at the Center for Continuing Education Building, which is located west of North Complex. 
The USD Athletic Department is using new technology to give away prizes at games. Fans who scan QR codes posted at each athletic event will earn points to redeem for prizes. Although not all prizes have been determined, potential rewards include coupons to local businesses, USD apparel, and free concessions. That's really the objective here, is to get people excited about attending athletic events, rewarding them for one, having fun, because athletic events are fun. But it's also about spirit. 80 Coyote fans have taken advantage of the new system by scanning in at each event they attend. In order to scan, simply download a free QR scanner for your smartphone, scan the code, and register through Facebook. If fans don't have smartphones but want to participate, they can register at the QR code desk at each event. On this week's Coyote blog, Chris Jessen encourages students to keep a clear head and nose, all while preparing for midterms. You just heard the news. D-Days are over, and that means it's time for the downhill slide toward midterm tests and projects. And nothing can screw that up more than getting sick. Sure, procrastination can kill a test. But it's hard to cram the night before when your textbook is covered in snot. It's that time of year where everyone starts getting colds and the flu, and it spreads quickly. There's a simple fix, though. Cover your mouth when you sneeze or cough. While sharing is caring, if you could keep your spittle and snot off my face, I would deeply appreciate it. Washing your hands also limits the spread of germs. No one appreciates a germ-covered hand. And most importantly, if you're really sick, stay home. If you wake up feeling and looking like death boiled over, don't go to class and give it to everyone else. It's okay to stay home and get better. Your fellow classmates will thank you for not spreading whatever unholy plague is haunting you. The midterm tests and projects October brings are stressful enough. Please don't add to it by making us all sick. For Kyle Blog, I'm Chris Jessen. Thanks, Chris. The November general election is less than one month away, and residents are preparing to vote. The number of registered Democrats and Republicans is down in South Dakota this year. The reason? Over 8,000 more voters have registered as independents in the 2008 election. The Republican Party still holds the majority of South Dakotans with 46 percent. 36 percent are registered as Democrats, and almost 91,000 have registered for the election as independents. South Dakota colleges are below the national average when it comes to keeping freshmen in school. The state's freshman retention rate is 72 percent, while the national average is 79. The Board of Regents has tried to create resources for students at the six public universities, including academic advising centers and attendance and classes. USD's freshman retention rate hit 78 percent last year, but fell to 75 percent this fall. Zumba's popularity at USD has been growing in recent semesters. Coyote News' Brianna Clark says the dance workout is taking over Dakota Days. The Wellness Center introduced students to a new way to spend Dakota Days this year, a healthier way, with a Zumba Marathon. Senior Zumba instructor Becca Reinhardt says it's important for students to have a healthier alternative during the homecoming week. So we wanted something that they can do that's campus related, and Zumba has been such a hit, so we really decided to put a zumba -thon on they have, uh, like I said, a healthy alternative for them to come and have fun and enjoy D-Days. Fellow instructor Anya Point believes it's more than just an alternative for the instructors. The stereotype is, is that people are going to go out and drink and engage in other activities and I really think that um, it's important for the Wallace Center to encourage their instructors um, to be role models for like the freshmen and sophomores to show them that there is a healthy alternative and that they can participate in something like this and that they're not alone. I think they'll come and go throughout the night. I know a lot of like my friends are coming a little later. Um, but yeah, they'll come, they'll go. Some will probably stay the whole time because there's prizes and food and it'll be fun. For Coyote News, I'm Brianna Clark. Thanks, Brianna. Over 50 people showed up to Friday night's event. Point says she hopes this become an, becomes an annual D-Day's event. It seems there are new clubs cropping up each year for USD students to join. One of the new campus groups is Ultimate Frisbee. Students in the Ultimate Club meet twice a week for practice. They also have occasional pickup games on the weekends. The club's 30 members are led by captains Colin Smith, John Matthews, and Nick Burke. The group will be traveling soon for warm-up games against Augustana College and SDSU. The club travels to Rapid City at the end of the month for a tournament. 
They're also trying to receive funding from the SGA. Students interested in joining Ultimate Frisbee or another campus club can check out the full list on USD's website. Mr. and Miss Dakota Days were crowned during halftime of Saturday's football game. Seven finalists were selected by an interview process and a general student vote. Live correspondent Angelica Brackens is in the muck with this year's winners. Thanks, Kelly. I'm here with Brennan Chemland and Alyssa Van Meteren, who were just crowned Mr. and Miss Dakota Days <coughs> this Saturday at halftime at the Dome. Thanks for joining us, guys. Can you tell me how it felt like when you guys got crowned? Yeah, it was, it was pretty surreal. It was... I mean, you're standing on this field and you're looking up at all of these people in red and it's kind of intimidating. And then when they say your name, you're just like, oh my gosh, it was, it was cool. It was cool. How about you, Brennan? Um, I, I mean, it, it goes so fast that you're just kind of like, oh, I'm, I'm now meeting the Brokaws. I'm now meeting, you know, the governor. And um, it's just a really cool thing to be able to be that person that represents the whole university. Can you tell me about some of the things that you guys did over D-Days? Yeah, I mean, the Dakota Days Planning Committee does such a good job of doing all of these events. And I think, you know, we sort of saw it as our responsibility, not just us, but all the candidates, to go to all these events and sort of to rally the, studi the students through that. Um, and so, yeah, definitely participated in all of that, as well as hanging out with the alumni that came back. That's always my favorite part. I think one of the coolest things was being um, in the parade with the other uh, top 14 candidates and being able to um, kind of show everyone, like, this is what we're here for. We're here to be um, representatives of USD and um, just so that the whole community can see that. Why do you think you guys got picked over everyone else? Well, I think what Dakota Days ultimately represents is <laughs> It's a celebration. It's a celebration of this school. And I think Mr. and Ms. Dakota are supposed to be um, the people who are who are the most passionate about USD, and I think that's that's definitely true for both of us. I mean, we love this school and and care about it so much. And, and I think for both of us, we've kind of tried to do so much work in the past three years um, for this university, for the community, and I think that um, it really pays off when you can you know say to someone like, yes, the students chose us, and they chose mm -hmm. us for a reason. So. So thank you. Thanks again to Alyssa and Brennan. Live from the Muck, I'm Angelica Brackens. Thanks, Angelica. The ROTC program has a new department chair, and they're updating their military science program. Yote reporter Mandy Ewald talks with ROTC advisors and students about what the changes mean for them. Student members of USD's ROTC program gain leadership skills while pursuing degrees in their chosen field. This week, We'll sit down with the new department chair of the Military Science Program and see what being in the ROTC is all about. Although Major Ross Nelson is new to USD, he is a seasoned soldier. I've been in the Army for 16 years. I'm an Army Aviation Officer. Um, most recently, um, I came from Fort Leavenworth, Kansas, and I worked for an office called the Mission Command Training Program. Uh, we traveled around the Army and helped to train military staffs as they were getting ready for deployments. Some things Major Ross Nelson believes students should know about the ROTC program include that it is a manageable time commitment and that they like to help out in the community. Uh, we're always looking for opportunities to uh, just get exposure for our cadets and to help out with the community. I know I think in January we're doing the yoke floats and um, we participate in a lot of the different um, fairs and activities. Uh, as for any changes to the program, Major Nelson believes he hasn't been here long enough to make those decisions yet. Um, I'd like to see the program grow more and, and be able to contract more cadets every year, but um, just coming into it, I didn't see anything that has to radically or drastically change immediately. For the Yelp Report, I'm Mandy Ewald. Today on Coyote Sports, the women's volleyball team broke its six-game losing streak, beating a conference rival. The football team fell in its first homecoming game since 2009, and commentator Taylor Moore takes on ba basketball. But first, sports headlines. Courtney? Thanks, Abby. An NFL cheerleader has pleaded guilty to having sex with a former student. Cincinnati Bengals cheerleader Sarah Jones says she began a relationship with a student while she was teaching at a Northern Kentucky high school. The student was 17 when the sex and sexually explicit text messages occurred. Jones's plea will allow her to avoid jail time. 
After the United States lost the Ryder Cup to Europe, Tiger Woods is apologizing for his poor performance. Woods was the top qualifier heading into the tournament, but failed to win any points for the U.S. in team play. Woods has played on seven Ryder Cup teams and says he hopes to play in the event for many more years. And those are your sports headlines. Thanks, Courtney. Along with practices and games, USC student-athletes are preparing for midterms like everyone else. Coyote News' Cassie Bartlett is live at the Muck with Athletic Academic Advisor Becky Jensen. Thanks, Abby. Thanks, Becky, for being with us today. Student athletes not only have to fit in their academics, but also their games and practices. Do they receive any special uh, resources or any exemptions from classwork, unlike other students? Um, they don't receive any exemptions from the classwork. Um, I'm sure they would appreciate that if they did. But um, they do get resources as far as tutoring goes. Um, we have a math lab that's for student athletes in the evenings. Uh, most of our tutoring sessions are also done in the evenings during study table time. Okay. And with the now being officially Division I, were there any changes to academic requirements for student athletes? There have been a lot of changes since Division II. Um, I was coaching here in Division II when we were Division II, and looking back, it didn't seem like we had any requirements compared to what we have now. Um, they have to re maintain certain uh, percentages towards their degree at the end of each year. So at the end of the first year, they have to have 24 hours of degree credits completed. By the end of their second year, they have to have 40% of their degree, 60% by the end of the third year, and so on. And so in, and within those degree percentages, they also have things that they have to do each semester um, credit-wise to make sure that they maintain their eligibility for the following semester. How many study hours are student athletes required to keep each uh, week? We require all incoming freshmen um, to, to go to study table for the, at least the first semester. And every team is a little bit different. But the general um, consensus is about six hours per week. Um, like I said, some teams require a bit more. And at the end of that semester, then we reevaluate based on grade point average if they have to maintain study table hours for the spring. Well, thanks so much, Becky, for being with us today. Midterms at USD start next week. For Coyote News Live, I'm Cassie Bartlett. Thanks, Cassie. The women's soccer team is three games into conference play and looking to change the pace. Coyote News' Ethan Nets says the team badly needs a win. The University of South Dakota women's soccer team had a tough game against the University of Nebraska Omaha last Friday. They lost in the final minute by one goal with the final score of two to three. Starting sophomore Colleen Reeves shares her insight on how the season is going up to this point. It's a little bit of a bummer because we've been working so hard and from last year, like no one graduated, so we we're excited that we're going to have the same team and then more. But, so it's been a little bit of upset that we're not winning as much as we'd hope. Reeves is disappointed on how conference play has been going up to this point, but is optimistic towards the future. The Coyotes are 1-9-3 overall and 0-2-1 in conference play. This next home game is this Friday at 4 o'clock against Fort Wayne. Go to Facebook.com backslash South Dakota Coyotes to become a fan of the USD Athletics Facebook page. Thanks, Ethan. The Coyotes host Summit League opponents Fort Wayne and Oakland this weekend. The women's volley volleyball team broke its six-game losing streak over D-Day's weekend, but the Coyotes weren't in a friendly atmosphere. The team upset conference rival SDSU after coming back from a 2-1 to one set deficit. Hitter Kendall Crittenbrink recorded a season high of 29 kills, and Riley Haug also had a season high with 25 digs in the match. The Coyotes returned home to host IUPUI Friday and Western Illinois Sunday in the Dakota Dome. The Coyotes had home field advantage as more than 10,000 fans filled the Dakota Dome for the homecoming game this weekend. USD wasn't able to push ahead and fell to Western Illinois 24 to 17 in its first D-Day's loss since 2009. USD quarterback Josh Vandermotten finished with 179 passing yards in the loss. Head coach Joe Glenn says the team wasn't big enough to stop the Leathernecks top player Nico Watson. The team travels to Missouri State Saturday. You can watch the game locally on KDLT-TV beginning at 1. 
On this week's More Sports, commentator Taylor Moore says it may be football season, but he's got basketball on his mind. I know it's football season, but something has just been bothering me in the NBA right now. People have been talking for weeks about how great the Lakers are going to be this year. The talk started when the Lakers picked up a couple of great players. We already know the team, Kobe, Gasol, and Metal World Peace, but now the team has Steve Nash and Dwight Howard too. The Lakers roster is just filled with talent. But before we can say they're going to win it all, I have a couple of questions. Will the Lakers actually come together as a team? Who will lead the team? Is it still Kobe's team or will Dwight Howard take over? We also need to keep in mind the other teams that LA may have to compete with. Did we forget the Heat won the championship last year? Their roster is filled with talent too. So let's be patient, wait for the season, and watch the teams in the NBA compete before we decide who's going to be the one to win it all. For more sports, I'm Taylor Moore. USD is constantly reminding students about the importance of not plagiarizing their work. And with midterms coming up, it's more important than ever. On this week's commentary, Chrissy Sorensen shows us what consequences will happen if you do choose to cheat. That creative university assignment is due tomorrow. I gotta get that done. this weekend. I'll see you on Monday. Charlie, can I speak to you for a second? Yeah, what's up, Dr. Sorensen? I'm sorry, Charlie. I can't accept your creative university project. And why is that? You plagiarized the entire thing. I did not. I recognize many details from Jack's project last year. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. Well, just because you changed the wording does not mean that it's different. I mean, your school's D1, you're going to have Einstein bagels, and I mean, you have a statue. Yeah, it's a coyote. Coyote? That's what that little thing was? Oh, and your fitness center also has a rock climbing wall. Yeah, but mine's six inches taller. I know a lot of things that are six inches tall. Like your coyote statue you attempted to create. Uh-huh. Charlie, you plagiarized your project. No innovative thought was put in it, into it. Nothing was creative or unique. And furthermore, you didn't put any effort into the University of South Dakota. Plagiarism, which is defined as, but is not limited to, the following. 1. The use, by paraphrase or direct quotation, of the published or unpublished work of another person without full and clear acknowledgement, consistent with accepted practices of the discipline. 2. The unacknowledged use of materials prepared by another person or agency engaged in the selling of term papers or other academic materials. Thanks, Chrissy. As you all know, last week was USD's homecoming, and students of all ages celebrated in a variety of ways. But how did this year compare to other years? Coyote News took to the streets to find out what you thought of this year's D-Days. A lot of fun. I'm a freshman. It was my first experience with it, and it was, I enjoyed it. It was great. It was great. It was the funnest D-Days yet. I had a very exciting first D-Days. It was okay. I really wish I was 21, though. D-Days went well. I uh, did a lot of fun activities at the front house the, for the school and everything, and uh, it was actually my freshman year, so that was a blast. I actually um, took advantage of the extra day off and went home to get some stuff done and planning my wedding, so I was able to go home and get stuff done for that. Uh, D-Days went great for me this year. It's my last D-Days here as at USC because I'm a senior. My D-Days was good. I'm on the dance team and we performed at the parade and at the game and we had a lot of fun this weekend. I really loved the three-day weekend that made D-Days just that much more better and uh, can't wait to come back as alumni and celebrate with everybody. I didn't really participate in D-Days this year. It was very entertaining. It's a football game. I uh, watched a kid crowd surf, and everyone moved, fell on his face. Pretty funny. New issue of the Volant hit newsstands today. Pick up your issue to read about USD's Oral History Center and new events happening in downtown Vermilion. Those stories and more can be found on volantonline.com. You can also check out the Coyote News link on the page. That's all for Coyote News. Don't forget to check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Have a great night and a good weekend. We'll see you next time.